finally got around to doing a little bit more around the raised area bed of my garden. And um, first thing I did is I went up to my local sawmill and I got a um, truckload of this mulch. They sell it for like $20 a yard and, you know, they charge you $40 for two yards, which is basically a truckload. And um, then I had to get some of that uh, that fabric to put down, that landscape fabric. And found some at Costco that said it was good for 30 years. So I don't know, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. But we'll see how long it lasts. So, um, you know, I find this mulch to be real good. You know, it's cheap stuff to use um, in areas that aren't close to your house. Because, you know, it's not treated like the stuff you get in bags. This is just basically um, at the sawmill, they remove all the bark. They debark all the logs and stuff and grind it up and, you know, make make mulch out of it. And then they dye it. So, you know, here it is just starting to spread the mulch around. And luckily, I haven't put the fence up yet. So it makes it real easy to um you know to get to the outside areas around these raised beds that i built from the um pool wall parts so um this stuff is uh you know it's really nice and it spreads easy and, and about the only problems i've been having this day is the weather um it's just it can turn on a dime it's been like uh you know pretty bad and uh, with that landscape fabric I got some of these little staples too they give you a couple bags of them to um, help hold it down so uh, wind and stuff doesn't blow it away before you get the mulch on it so you know basically just put down a layer of um, this fabric and you know I want to overlap it a little bit over what I had already put down under those compo under those um, raised beds so just had to trim it, trim it a little bit around them just to, you know, so I get a little more overlap there. Um, so, you know, basically that's, it just takes a couple minutes, pretty easy job. Um, I did find a new knife on uh, Amazon that I'm going to have to do a video about. That's a really good garden knife and uh, just all purpose knife that I've been using a lot lately. And, uh, you know, there it is. Start putting a little bit of mulch in there just to hold down the fabric while the wind starts you know coming and stuff so i'm gonna spread it i've got it spread pretty much i'm trying i'm shooting for about four inches but i'm somewhere between three and four inches on um you know the thickness of it and i'm hoping that's enough and you now there you can see i did fill in some of the short pieces of fabric along the side there to to, um, you know have everything covered with the fabric and I still have a little bit to dig out and you know some cleaning up to do in that one left hand corner there where you see the grass growing but um, you know here this is I'm basically just just getting going with it now and just like I said trying to kind of stay ahead of the weather because um, this day it was like uh, I get about you know maybe 45 minutes to an hour outside working and the next thing I know there'd be um, a massive storm coming through and you know here you can see here's one of the storms where I had to run inside um, we we're getting like these storms that were just pouring rain and um, hail all mixed together and the hail was only about the size of a nickel to a dime, you know nickel to dime size and um, but still it was enough to you know make you have to run inside all the time so, um, I guess they called it Lake Effect Rain because, um, it was coming off of Lake Ontario there. So, so back, you know, back outside after that storm and work a little bit more on it. And, you know, there it is basically, um, I got all the mulch spread and, uh, it's, it's three to four inches deep for the most part. Uh, I think that should, you know, help take care of it. It's really you know help clean up all the mud and it's really um you know it's, it's keeping the weeds down and um i actually went back to the other little pass section i had mulched and i cleaned that up and redid all the mulch in there too so um you know that part's basically done now so it's on to the fencing and i had you know purchased this uh, four foot high fencing at tractor supply a little while ago so I'm finally getting around to putting it up it's kind of kind of hard to deal with on winding and stuff once you um you know unhook the wires that hold it closed it gets like a, a it just springs open and gets like a giant slinky in there to 
to try and move around and um, hold and stuff. So, you know, if you a job like this, it really would have been easier if I had some other, you know, some more help. But um, I didn't, so I just tried to, you know, use some clamps and stuff wherever I could to act like an extra hand. Lucky this day with a nice sunny, um, little breezy, cool day to work. So um, this with a made it a pretty easy job. So you know, first thing I did is I really put some. Uh, you can see some of the Craig screws I put in there along the, the top rails of the fence, and this is just kind of to, to hook everything in place and hold it from falling down and sagging while I'm unrolling it. So um, you know that did take a while because it's. Like I said, it's like, you know, dealing with a 100-pound slinky there, trying to, to get that stuff to unroll. And um, it's kind of, you know, all trying to, it, it doesn't roll, you know, come off to roll exactly flat or anything either. It's um, it's not perfect the way they manufacture this stuff. So, um, you know, struggle with that for a little while and finally got it unrolled. Got it going down the whole length there and... Um, You can you can kind of see how um, you know it's got a lot of a lot of twists and bends in it and stuff there and then I had decided to step the um, the fence up to keep the top of it level and um, let the bottom follow the hill so you know I had to go back and I I could have probably just bent the bottom over and buried it in the dirt but I I decided instead to um, to just go back and trim off the fence in the areas where it um, you know the the boards on the base there basically stepped up as I went along. That's just a the fence is real soft cutting if you have a good pair of um those like electrician pliers and stuff. So you know there it is all all rolled out now and you know pretty much hanging on those screws and you can see how you know it's really twisted and bent and everything else. So now it's time to start the stretching of it. Now I installed it with this, uh, I've got an 18 gauge narrow crown stapler that I, I use for this and it makes the job easy. I mean you can do hand staples and stuff but um, I just use some uh, one inch galvanized staples in this and it makes it you know a real easy job. So first thing I did is I got everything lined up on that one corner. And then I cut a couple strips of wood. Um, the one on the outside there fits perfectly between the um, the spacing on the fence wire. And I put another one on the back just to be able to screw it to. So um, basically that front strip is locked into the, um, the fencing. And it's going to put equal pressure all along as I pull it. And then I just went back and put in some uh, woodworking clamps. And use them to... Um, stretch it tight now as you pull you know as you pull on that piece it just kind of stretches everything and gets most of the wrinkles and uh, warps and stuff out of it and you know pulls it down tight and then I just went back with the stapler and I actually I put a staple at each each intersection there so um, it did turn out to be quite a few staples by the time I got done with the fence but you know, I figure they're not real heavy staples or anything, and um, it doesn't hurt to put a couple extra ones in. So, you know, I just went wild and put one on every cross. Now, there's probably, you know, better ways to stretch it and staple it down, but um, I'm just using what I have available and, uh, you know, trying to get the best job that I can. So I went, you know, I stapled across the top of it, and then I kind of pulled it down, and I put a staple on each uh, wire on the bottom of it also to that base there and then later when I got done I went up the um, each of the poles where it crosses and put some staples in there so it seemed to be you know on there pretty good when I got done and um, these 18 gauge staples seem to you know last for 10 12 years I think so that should be good enough so there it is I you know pretty much got that first section um, stapled on and I decided to you know to pull it twice uh, stretch it twice because it's easier when you're using the clamps um, it takes a lot of force to stretch the uh, full 50 foot so um, you know I did it at about 25 feet there and um, and that you know really makes it pretty easy so that now what I'm going to do is uh, move everything down to the end 
and just stretch that second half of it to um, to get the warps out. Now you you really can't get it perfect because um, the way the fence is manufactured, you still get a little bit of um, waviness in some areas and stuff, no matter how tight you pull it. So you know you just have to shoot for the best possible results that you can get and be happy with that. So same thing, you know, I put those boards in there to keep the fence from getting deformed and then just use the clamps to, to stretch it tight. And, and same thing, you know, go back and put staples in. And actually, you know, it didn't take too long using a stapler. It went pretty quick, so it wasn't a bad job and it was, you know, a real nice afternoon anyway. So once I got the uh, that long face of the fence done, I went back to the end where the gate's going to be and had to do some bending around the corner there and stretch, did the same thing there. I stretched it and, um, you know, stapled it down. And then I did leave a little bit extra that I had to go back and trim off. Um, I didn't want to be short and, you know, I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I did that and then I just took the end of each wire so there'd be no sharp points by the gate there and just bent it over and just hammered it back into the uh, post and you know that way there's nothing you can get caught on or you know anybody can get hurt on and then it was off to the um, the other side and you know this side's a little bit shorter this side I think the fence is only about 40 inches tall here because of the you know stepping for the grade so same thing just went back and stretched it out and just stapled it So, you know, pretty much glad this is almost done now. I just have to go back and, you know, trim the top of those posts level there and um, do a little more molting on the outside. And, you know, basically this area will be done and ready to move on to other things. So, you know, I just thought I'd share this video and, um, you know, show you how I put up and stretch the fence. It may not be the best way to do it, but, you know, that's how I did it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.